Hi there, it's Ken with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with a top 10 list in anticipation for the Masters 25 of cards I would like to see downshifted into the popper format. Now with every master set there inevitably is cards that are downshifted just so they can add them in the limited environment for the masters sets. Think of Eternal Masters downshifted a lot of the Elves so the Elves Tribal could work in the draft format. We saw cards like Seeker of the Way or Mortician Beetle being downshifted in Master sets to enable other certain archetypes. Or they've just downshifted cards that they feel like were under, are, are the power level of them were commons rather than uncommons or rares. So there are a lot of cards that I would like to see in Popper. Before, I want to give a disclaimer that I think the Popper format is incredibly good at the moment. It doesn't need shakeups. It doesn't really have to have these cards because there's still a lot of room for innovation. Now that the, the format has taken off in paper, we've seen a lot of new decks come out of nowhere and uh, already have an impact on the popper meta however there is a lot of cards that i think that we could use for even more innovation and would enable a bunch of archetypes uh, to be played in the format so the first two are not really going to be cards that enable archetypes rather that cards that answer archetypes the first category is going to be graveyard hate even though we do have cards like the relic of progenitus or Nile Spellbomb in the format. I think we could use some other options for Graveyard Hate in other colors. Starting with white, Stone Clerical would be the card that I would downshift from an uncommon to a common. It is Flash, Flying, and when it enters the battle for return a creature you control to its owner's hand, and then it exiles a target card from a graveyard when it enters the battlefield. It has kind of the core Skyfisher feel to it, so right there it would go in an archetype. Uh, there's a white-black flicker, there's a white-blue flicker strategy, there's also the Kadatha Boros that has the return with the Glint Hawks with the Core Sky Fishers. And so Stone Cloaker, I think, would be perfect for this particular deck. It can get rid of pesky cards in the graveyard that get recurred, like the Pulse of Marasa combo uh, deck. We see some of the Tron decks or some of the heavy uh, control decks, five color controls, uh, recur the Wall and the Pulse of Marasa combo just to stabilize indefinitely. Stone Clerk would be a great addition for white. For green, I think Loaming Shaman would be perfect here. Loaming Shaman is a 3-2 Centaur for, th for 3 mana, and when there's a Battlefield target player shovels any number of target cards from his or her graveyard into his library. This could have green have a way to answer those dredge based decks or again recurring combo based decks and i think this the power level of this card is common not rare and i think it'd be safely be able to be downshifted on black i'd like to see withered wretch with the wretch is zombie and a cleric both of those are on the verge of seeing play in tribal type strategies i'd like to see more tribals be put in popper but the Withered Wretch mainly is, I think, the closest thing we could, we could have to a Scavenging Ooze in the format. So for one mana, you can exile target card from a graveyard. It's a two mana, two black. So that's relevant because it's hard to splash in decks, but it would also would go in the mono black devotion base deck, which does tend to have some problems against pesky flashback cards or just the recurring value that a lot of these dredge or uh, control decks do with their graveyard. So with the rest would be a, a welcome addition for that. Um, and then in blue, I'd like to see Learn from the Past. Learn from the Past is a four mana from Dragons of Tarkir that has target player shuffle his or graveyard into his or library and then draw a card. It also would give us like this anti-mill type strategy, which mill isn't that big of a deal, but again, it would be uh, another card we would have an answer for a deck. And I, that's what I like about Popper, is Popper is the format of answers. Uh, last but not least, we have Tormod's Crypt. The main reason I want Tormod's Crypt to be downshifted is this card is has been printed as a common in the past, but not on MT Joe. So just for simplicity's sake, I would like to see this downshifted on MT Joe to a common, and that way we can get rid of kind of the headache of um, is this card legal is this card not legal and it's not strictly better or, or it, situationally it's better than the relic progenitus but most cases you'll want a relic or a spell bomb over, over the tormod's crypt i'd also like to see rakdos charm i'd like to see a lot of the charms downshifted but specifically rakdos charm because it has three modes that i think are relevant for popper one being exile all cards from target player's graveyard uh, the other is destroy an artifact, and the other one is each creature deals one damage to its controller. So there's no point at the moment to going over from red, mono red, into black red burn. There's like cards like Bump in the Night and uh, Tyrant's Choice that are very interesting for burn if we were to go into black, but the mana base is just so perfect if you're in a monocolor deck, you don't have to worry about the pesky comes into play tap stuff. Rakdos Charm might actually be able to push 
over some persuade some people over to the uh, Rakdos burn as the three modes on this are extremely relevant uh, for burn. So those are this the, the first category on uh, my number ten is cards I'd like to be downshifted to specifically interact with graveyard based strategies. My number nine slot is the pesky blue control. There's a lot of counter spells in Popper that are very very powerful. On the early days of Magic, I think that the designers overvalued control cards like Counterspells uh, and undervalued creatures. And unfortunately, Popper is a relic of that time period because a lot of the cards are... Uh, any card that's ever been printed as, as a common is legal. So I think I'd like to see some answers against that. So green has a lot of those. Savage Summoning is a spell that can't be countered. Makes the next creature spell have flash and can't be countered. And has an additional plus one one counter when it enters the battlefield. Typically Stompy decks and green decks are pretty good versus Delver, but this would be another uh, good addition. There's also another alternative called Insist, that you draw a card and the next creature can't be countered. Or Autumn's Veil, which will also give protection against the black removals, as spells you control can't be countered or uh, by blue or black spells, and creatures you control can't be the target of blue or black spells this turn. It is an uncommon, but I think is safe to downshift. There are cards in red, like the Overmaster, uh, the, the next instant or sorcery spell you cast can't be countered, so therefore you can make sure your lightning bolt sticks and kills that Delver. Or you could just go the route of Rending Volley or Combust. Both of these are uncommons that can't be countered and deal 5 damage to a white or blue creature. And I think that they would be a great addition to give a, a little bit of, of, of answers towards those pesky blue uh, tons of counterspell dot deck uh, strategies. Uh, last but not least, we have some green creatures. I think Skylasher would be a pretty sweet card to downshift. I don't think it would be broken in the popper format. It is a rare for two, two mana for a 2-2 two, two flash. Can't be countered. Reach protection from blue. Specifically printed to answer Delver of Secrets. However, it, as a rare, it's not in the format where Delver is seeing play, and I think that they should downshift it for that reason. I think that Blue can still use cards like the Perilous Mirror to, or there's even, there's a lot of cards uh, that can just do two damage or uh, kill a creature at that point, like the Serrated Arrows. It would just be two activations of Serrated Arrows to kill the Skylasher. A lot of Blue decks already do play it, so there's an answer for an answer, and that's what I like about the Popper format. Um, Scragnoth is also an interesting card, a 3-4 for 5 mana, can't be counter protection from blue. 5 mana is a stretch for Popper, but this could be a sideboard card for a lot of the decks that they can just throw in to at least give some sort of uh, action versus the Delver type decks. I thought about Volcanic Fallout, but after analyzing this card, I think Volcanic Fallout is just too powerful for the Popper format, as it deals 2 damage to each creature and player, which is extremely relevant for Burn. Uh, sometimes Burn does have trouble with the go-wide strategy, so I have to bring in cards like Electric Trickery. This would just be insanely uh, good in the, the burn strategies wouldn't even kill your own um, Thermo Alchemist. I think it's just a little bit too pushed for Popper, so I don't think it should be downshifted. All right, so with those out of the way, my number eight is going to be a archetype that doesn't exist right now in the Popper format because most equipments are printed as uncommons or higher. I think they do that mainly for the limited environment, not really the power level of the cards. Uh, because they don't want you to be, you know, have to draft so many of them. Limited, you need very specific cards, so you can build a 40-card deck. If they were to put so many equipments, it would just be heavy on the equipments, and you wouldn't be able You'd have some very awkward limited formats. So I think that some of these need to be downshifted to make it worthwhile. There actually isn't many equipments in the common slot that are even above the converted mana cost 3, let alone any higher, and the ones that are are pretty terrible. So the card that I really want downshifted was Quest for the Holy Relic. I think that Go Wide White, with Thraben Inspectors and Glint Hawk Hawks and uh, Core Skyfishers would really like the quest for the Holy Relic. That would give a, a, a different little way you could build it. Uh, but we do need some equipments that are worthwhile. I don't think that a quest into a, a one-mana Bone Splinter would be the right call. So uh, I, I would like to see something like Necropanzer, which is a six-mana living weapon. Equip creature gets plus three plus one in haste and equip two. I think that's perfect because it gets you a six drop and it has a low equip cost. Is that's exactly what you want to see with the quest for the holy relic. Another card I'd like to see is Mortar Pod. Mortar Pod would give 
breed new life into the aristocrats type deck, which I'll be talking about later down this list. And it is something that if it's downshifted, it can be tutored up with Quest for the Holy Relic. If you're going wide, it will give you your deck a little bit of a, a reach and can actually p ping off pesky cards like the Fairy Miscreants and uh, the Delver Secrets and whatnot. So I'd like to see Mortar Pod downshifted. And last but not least, something like Locks and Warhammer. Probably not Locks and Warhammer. It might be a little too powerful. It is a rare. It would need, need quite a bit of downshifting. But just the equipment that make, make it worthwhile on the attack with the Quest for the Holy Relic that turn. Equip gets you plus three plus zero and trample, trample and lifelink, and equip three would be perfect for those those Thraben Inspectors, those Glint Hawks, those Core Sky Fishers. But it might just be do too much for the uh, uh, mana cost of the card. Uh, but you can compare it to a lot of Auras that are on specific power level, like Bogles. Um, and I think that we do need a good solid equipment, and this would be the choice for that. Uh, that could easily be downshifted. Uh, two other cards that would go in this type of archetype or breathe uh, other. Uh, instead of going the white route, I'd like Deadeye Quartermaster. This was just printed recently in Ixalan, and when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for equipment or vehicle. So there's some interesting vehicles like the Sky Sift that I think would be pretty cool with the Deadeye Quartermaster, the Crew 1, 2, 3 flying. But getting equipment with this, like a, a, a Mortar Pod or a Sylvan Life Staff or a Verdian Longbow, uh, this might be something that the decks would like. So Deadeye Quartermaster, I'd like a tutor for equipment in the format and this is the best one in my opinion that we could we could downshift and then weapons trainer weapons trainer is a 3-2 for 2 mana I'd like to see a lot of more multicolored cards because the mana is so bad in popper for 2 color or 3 color decks so that you can't just like splash these in other creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0 and as long as you control as long as you control an equipment so I think this would justify the equipment based strategy uh, maybe we wouldn't have to go with the quest or holy relic but would, would at least equipment be relevant in popper on to my number seven is going to be a tribe that is almost there. I think I'd like to see more tribes in Popper. Right now we have Slivers, we have Elves, and we have Goblins. And really nothing outside of those uh, as, are, are, are a tribe. So Fairies are almost there. Right now, Fairies do have the Fairy Miscreant and the Spells that are Sprite that uh, have the tribe feel to that. But they're still running like Spire Golems, Ninjas, and Delvers in that type of strategy. I'd like to see an all-in fairy type deck. You can go black, blue fairies with pester, uh, with pepper smoke, and there are a few other cards like the, the thieving, thieving sprite that, that seem pretty interesting. But with, for just even mono blue, there we could add a card like fairy imposter or quickling downshifted. So fairy imposter is very similar to the glint hawk. One mana for a 2-1 when it enters the battlefield you have to sacrifice unless you return another uh, creature to hand. It pairs very well with the Fairy Miscreant and the Spell Stutter Sprite. We also have Quickling, which is very similar to this, but it has Flash Flying 2-2, two, two, and same thing as the Fairy Imposter. So it'd be a way to get back to your Spell Stutter Sprites, and I think it would push a lot of these decks that, that, that are the Delver Slash Fairies into one or the other. And Quickling is a, a really, really nice card. They, I don't think it'd be too powerful for Popper at the moment. And then we need a payoff for fairies to really go into fairies. I think this is where Sprite Noble would come into play. Not a lot of Lord type cards. This one's a three mana, two, two flying. Other creatures you control with flying get plus zero plus one. So it protect you against the electricery type cards. And other creatures you control with flying get plus one plus zero if you tap it, activate it. So it make it give those uh, spell splutter sprites and fairy miscreants a little bit of a push after that point. So I'd like to see Blue get some love in the fairy type tribe and add another tribal deck to the popper format. On to my number six. Number six is Aristocrats. Aristocrats is almost there, but it needs a finisher, it needs a payoff. So I'm looking at Zulport Cutthroat and Blood Artist for this being downshifted. However, they might be too powerful. For the format, we do have a red creature that deals a damage to a player whenever a creature dies, and maybe that's the best we can we can hope for. It's a three mana. Uh, there might be some loops with this that I'm not aware of in in Popper that could break it, but I think that's the biggest difference between going from a, a four mana to a two mana, kind of make this taxing aristocrats type strategy uh, worthwhile. On to my number five. Number five is a tribe that I am in love with. More of a card that I'm in love with. I had a lot of fun with in Modern, but it's just not, the power level is not there for Modern anymore. And this is Rage Forger. So Rage Forger is a, a three mana for a two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you put a plus one count on each other shaman creature you control. And whenever a creature you control with a plus one counter on it attacks, 
that creature deals one damage to target player. So it has kind of the Hell Rider effect to it. It has the Shaman Tribal effect to it. Also works with plus one, plus one. We have a lot of Shamans already in the Popper format that get plus one, plus one counters or would benefit from a plus one, plus one counter. And I think this card would be extremely fun to brew around in Popper. Uh, a few other cards that would support it in the Shaman type tribe, the first one being Wild Beastmaster. Uh, I, this could easily be downshifted from a rare to a common, in my opinion. It has like a common ability. Whenever Wild Beastmaster attacks, each other creature gets plus X plus X, where X is Wild Beastmaster's power. This one could go even in white, green tokens, and then a pump spell, for example, could be a finisher with Wild Beastmaster. Uh, there's a lot of other cards like Atog that do this already, uh, so I don't think that this would be unheard of in Popper or would ne necessarily warp how the, the, the format plays out. And it's also a Shaman that benefits from a plus one, plus one counter for the Rage Forger. Another one I like is Antioch Survivalist. I like cards that have a relevant creature type. They also do something relevant in the format. This is a three mana or a two mana. When it is turned face up, destroy target artifact or enchantment opponent controls. So Antioch Survivalist requires some wor work. First, you have to morph it over, and then you have to mega morph it over for two. It'd become a three two and destroy an artifact or enchantment. I think this is this is exactly where you, you want to be on the, the power level of Popper. Uh, requires some work. It does have a relevant shaman plus one plus one counter work of Rage Forger, and it would be a perfect addition uh, to this archetype. Last but not least is Rabble Rouser. This is kind of like the honorary Wild Beastmaster. It's a goblin shaman, so it could be actually splashed in goblin stacks with Bloodthirst 1. It does cost 4 mana, and again, the, there's a world of difference between 3 and 4 in, in Popper. And Bloodthirst 1, and then red and tap attacking creatures get plus X plus 0 to unturn where X is Rabble Rouser's power. So being a 1-1, one, one, that's not very relevant unless you can pump it up. Rage Forger is a nice one. A few of the other goblins that can then give this a, a boost and then you can tap it. You could easily finish off your opponent uh, with a lethal attack and with goblins. So I think it's like it would be very eligible to be downshifted. All right, so now we're getting on to the good stuff. Uh, on to our number four is an archetype I've been working with for quite some time. This is Madness slash Unearth. So, and I think this wants to be in black red. So the first card I would like to see downshifted is Shambling Remains. It is a 4-3 for three, three, three mana, can't block, and has Unearth 2. So think about Faithless Looting type cards. Again, it synergizes the Madness. The black red Madness is almost there. We have Fiery Temper and Alms. We have a lot of other Call to the Netherworld. We have a lot of Madness cards and Unearth cards and flashback cards that work in this archetype, but I think it still needs some uh, some reasonable payoffs, and Shambling Remains will be another card that they can add to the toolbox of cards that can would see play in this in this type of deck. Uh, again, if we're over to a very similar archetype like Burn or Stompy, those are all monocolored decks. There needs to be a reason to push the multicolored cards over the top, and we need cards that have uh, some strength like the Shambling Remains. Another one is Big Game Hunter. Big Game Hunter is a black card that if we have Angler in the format, I think we need some, some better answers towards the Gurmog Angler. And Big Game Hunter would be perfect for this. It's a 3 mana for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, you destroy a creature with power 4 or greater. It can't be regenerated. And has Madness of Black. So it would, it would go more in the Madness decks than it would go in other decks, but even Mono Black Devotion could definitely throw the Big Game Hunter in uh, to maybe kill like an Ulmox Crusher or uh, kill a um a, an angler so i'd like to see this one downshifted uh after that is a, a pet card of mine called Sidra sidraxis specter Sidra sidraxis specter is a three two for three mana a blue a black and a red right there this card is difficult beyond difficult to cast in the popper format you'd have to at that point go into uh prophetic prism type cards or uh the the uh, signets to even be able to fix the color for the specters. So where this card shines would be the unearth, which is it would be two mana to unearth it, and then when it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. So you get some value off of you know Faithless Looting, throwing this in the graveyard, not going card disadvantage, then you can unearth it back and then swing in for three and get your opponent to discard a card. So it, again, this whole thing, it breathes new life to a alternative to maybe burn or stompy or, or those type of cards with an unearth based strategy. Uh, last but not least for madness is reckless worm. The mirror of this card, the green version is legal in popper and we've seen some blue green madness decks see play in popper from time to time. 
but I would like to see this one just specifically for red. And we could go with some sort of green red frog in a blender type deck with the Baskin Root Wallows, Wild Mongrel type cards, and madness these in for 4-4 four, four, for 3 mana, basically is what it ends up being, or again, getting some value off of a Vathless Looting, uh, if, you know, 4 mana at that point for a 4-4 four, four Trample, and doesn't cost you a card. So if the green one's legal, might as well make the red one legal. So on to my number three, this is probably the most risky category here. This is the cycling. Now cycling did have a set that just came out with Amica and Hour of Devastation. However, most of the cards I think would be relevant in Popper, they put it on commons. The one I'd like from that block is Ruthless Sniper, downshifted from a one mana or, or down downshift from an uncommon to a common. It's one mana for a one two. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. If you do, put a negative one, negative one counter on target creature. I think that's perfectly where you want to be to shoot down those Delvers before they flip or the Fairy Miscreants, a uh, bunch of the Elves. Um, then we have in green, we have Invigorating Boon, which whenever a player cycles a card, you may put a plus, plus one counter on target creature. Again, I'd like to see more plus one, plus one, plus one themes. And this gives a nice little cycle, 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 make a threat, uh, give a payoff for the cycling. Uh, and then we have Lightning Rift. Lightning Rift is probably too powerful, I would say, for Popper. A two-man enchantment. Whenever a player cycles a card, you may pay one. If you do, it deals two damage to a creature or player. Yeah, I think that this might be too broken, but there is enchantment-based hate. However, the card I do really want to be uh, downshifted is Astral Slide. This is a card that I've had an obsession with. Trying to make it work, of course, it's not in any relevant format. I've tried it in, in, in Commander before, but again, haven't really had any, any decks that have worked very well with it. Whenever a player cycles a card, you may exile target creature if you do return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So in a flicker type format, I think Mole Drifters, um, if, a, a, even even better with Astral Slide would be able to, the the wall, you could either cycle the wall or the Wizard that gets back an instant spell from your graveyard, recycle it, and then flicker it again. And so if you get any more value um, from other ETB type effects, this can also be used to stop an attacker, stop a blocker, and it's a three mana enchantment. So I think it's pretty safe and would open up an entire archetype for uh, Popper. On to my number two. Now, of course, I'm called the Rogue Deck Builder. One of the very first things that I tried to experiment with in Popper was Popper Rogues. And I think that it's almost there, especially the fairy rogues. So the first one is a fairy rogue called the Una's Black Guard. It's a two mana for a 1-1. One, one. Each other rogue creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter. And whenever a creature with a plus one plus one counter deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. So I want to see this discard a card type uh, archetype be relevant in the popper format. And of course, rogues have a lot of rogues that have evasion. Even in black and in blue, there are a ton of them that cannot be blocked or have fear or intimidate. And the black guard gives them the tribal, uh, the anthem type effect to that, and it has a payoff. So this would be the perfect card. This would be probably uh, my favorite card, in all honesty, even though it's my number two to be downshifted, as then I could, I could make rogues or fairy rogues work in the proper format. Now, the other card I like to see downshifted is another Prowl call card called Noggin Whack. This is Prowl 2. It's a two mana for a double, du two and two, two double black. For a target player reveals three cards from his or her hand. You choose two of them, that player discards those cards. Again, I'd like to see discard relevant. We have so much draw in the format. So Noggin Whack would be perfect uh, to kind of counter the, the draw type decks. And Prowl 2, with all those evasive rogues that have fear intimidate can't be blocked for one mana perfectly on curve your opponent still gets to protect three to four cards because if they have a seven card hand they can just reveal the the uh three cards that aren't that relevant and you get to get rid of two of them but it's great card disadvantage so much card advantage in popper we need card disadvantage to be a thing so hoping for nog and whack to be downshifted now, of course, on to my number one, which is the uh, everyone that's has been a fan of the channel knows that I have an unhealthy obsession with Soul Sisters, and I don't like how Soul Sisters runs in Popper. I think we need a better payoff rather than just gaining life. And so for that, I think a Johnny's Pride Mate being downshifted from uncommon to common would breathe life into a Soul Sisters type 
deck, it would be able to compete with that pesky burn based deck, and burn would still be okay. They have a lot of ways to punish Soul Sisters. Another card I thought was Angelic Accord. This is a four mana enchantment, so very safe to be downshifted. And then you have to gain four more life in a turn at the beginning of each end step. If you did gain four more life, four more life, you get a four four angel token. So it's a renewable resource. There are cards like Repulse and Vapor Snag that can keep this in check, as well as a lot of enchantment hate that can also kill this if this is the basically the win con in the deck. So I think it's quite safe to be downshifted and to be a, a, a nice addition to the popper format. But speaking of life gain, how about we print a, a downshifted card too that can punish life gain. And this is Kavu Predator. A 2 mana for a 2-2 two, two trample. Whenever an opponent gains life, put them in a plus one zone counters on Kavu Predator. That way we can we can interact with those well wisher type decks or Soul Sisters, or there's a lot of lone missionaries and Arashian clerics in this format. This can actually give some plus ones encounters to Kavu Predator and punish them for playing these life gain. I think Stompy kind of needs a card like this. There's still Circle Protection that keeps us in check. A lot of other cards that keeps us in check and would mainly be relegated to a sideboard card to bring in versus the life gain strategy. So again, a format that's dominated by answers, this would be a great answer to the popper format. So anyway, that is my list of the top 10 archetypes, I guess, or cl a cluster of cards that I'd like to see downshifted in rarity to give Popper some other different archetypes to work around or some brew cards to work around. I'm very interested in your list of cards you would like to see downshifted in rarity for Popper and also would like to know how Popper is, is doing in your local scene or if you've picked up Popper, what do you think about it? I, it's really taken off at our local game store, and we've had a lot of fun with it. I, I've built like 14 different popper decks. We just share them around and encourage other people to build their own, but until they build their own, they can just, you know, play a deck, and, and we've had some really, really good times at Gone Real Games with Popper. Let me know what you think in the comments section below, if if uh, this these cards are too broken or not. And again, your lists are, are more than welcome. This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.